just turned on the lights and it's already bright. <laughs> Let's see if we can manage to get this going here. So you know that there's a change of plan. I am the backup. So this is going to be about paragraphs and content editing. It's going to be about paragraphs, yeah. Just like I'm going to tell everybody, I'm going to allow everybody to walk out. <laughs> because I, I don't want to... Yeah, so like, we need maybe somebody from the venue, right? Okay. I was, I was, I was going to say, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not volunteering this year because I don't, don't have WhatsApp on my phone, but I have used these things before because I used to volunteer. <laughs> Although, there's also a teaching pod user guide. Yeah. Wake up the pod. Firmly turn, turn up some screen here. Power of the PC. Do I, will there be no way to touch, to pull, like, put your... Yeah. <laughs> Can somebody and, get? And for the recording, there was that thing. Yeah, no. Should we maybe try to get like somebody who is? There should be a bond. There must be a, have HMI. At least we had to get into this thing, the computer here. How did you get in from here? From the step down to the stage. Good thing that the slides are on Google, so... Good God! This is so old, you can barely see it now. Lightning or HDMI will do. If you can log onto the. So if you want the laptop, please. That one here. Yeah. And that one. Yeah. Okay, can we get a um, Mac Lightning adapter for HDMI? The benefits of being the first, right? Lightning or HDMI. We, we can see it around the yeah, right. Thank you. Yeah. So all sit down here? Yeah. Cool. Yeah. That's it. Thank you. Worst case scenario. True. Like hoping that there's internet here too. But the good thing is the, the talk is not so long, so mm -hmm. how, how so, long? It's okay with the support. So it's okay to be a little bit late. Like again, like this is a replacement session. So it's not like what it says in the in here. So this is gonna be about paragraphs, content editing, and so feel free to Leave if you were going to see the Browser Wars 2018. So you're not being rude.
Thank you. So let's in. Yeah, we're right here. Sleep, it's okay. <laughs> Can we put in uh, um, sound? Uh, it should pick up sound. Can we try that? Uh, you, yes, please. Is it flickering? How long do I know? Until 11.35. Would you like to put in the sound? Yes, perfect. Great. So again, this is a change. So we have the session about flexible content editing with paragraphs and Drupal 8. And we do not have the original what was planned for Azure Wars 2018. So feel free to leave. You're not, you're not, it's not this really like, I will not look. But this is gonna be about content editing experience and how you can actually use paragraphs in a really smart way and sometimes why you should not use paragraphs because paragraphs can sometimes be a pain in the ass. So I'm just going to give the German five minutes, right? Or what's it called? The so this is the talk that you're attending? Okay. So maybe we're going to start off by um, telling you very briefly that this morning I walked in, I got my first cup of coffee and then somebody from Drupal Camp London said like, oh, we have like two people that can't come because of weather and uh, does anybody know anybody to, that could fill up this session? So that was basically half an hour ago, so that's me. Uh, I'm going to be talking again tomorrow, but um, so please, like, I did this talk last summer, around about, like in the Drupal camp in, in Germany. And um, so maybe like I don't, don't have it exactly here up on the top of my head, but I will do my best. But this is definitely like uh, something that we are doing a lot and I'm, I'm very, you know, I care about this topic. So I will just start. And it should also not be so long, so let's just go through it. It's more about inspiration and for you guys to think about the difference between using paragraphs and using CK Editor and when to use what, because probably most of you have experience with Drupal. So is anybody here who is a complete newbie for Drupal? You can also say yes, me. All have experience. Um, do you have all experience with Drupal 8 as well? Yeah, I see you knocking. No? No, no. More Drupal 7? Yeah. So, um, yeah, basically we have been using uh, so Drupal paragraphs since Drupal 7 and we basically replaced everything around about two or three years ago to change so we just use paragraphs all the time that we can. So it's also, a, it's not only Drupal 8 here, the Drupal 8 part is just showing a little bit of extra stuff that you can do that you cannot do so easily in Drupal 7, but um, it should still apply to, even though if you're not that familiar to Drupal 8. So let's start. Uh, I'm Patti. I come from Iceland. Uh, I live in Germany. And I have these two kids and what they love the most about Drupal is that when we go to DrupalCon, we get uh, t-shirts from Druid. <laughs> and so every year, and actually I, did, I couldn't find on the spot like more pictures, but every year we always get a new kids t-shirt, so they actually get cooler t-shirts than, than us. 
so we can follow up with these kids, like the how they are wearing the tweet. But otherwise, I, I studied in uh, this uh, university in Reykjavik, uh, computer science, and then I did my master degree in engineering in 2008. And when we were studying, when I was studying in Vienna in the technical university there, we actually uh, got to know Drupal. And we started to play with Drupal, it was like 4.7, we basically did everything wrong and we, we didn't understand really what this was about. And it was not until in 2012 that we really stepped into the community. Uh, but until then we were just using this awesome open source project in, uh, in a couple of like projects that we were working on. So um, these are the two kids that I have, uh, Elva and Jakob. And they are half German, or they are actually one fourth Danish, one fourth German, and one or half Icelandic. So we call them Europeans. Uh, this is uh, the company that uh, I own in Germany. So we have an office in Frankfurt, we have an office in Spain, just opened that up with Ruben, if anybody knows him from the Drupal community. Uh, we are 25 people around, we are mostly just developers. Um, so less focus on design and all that, more focus on development. Um, we are probably supporting partner of the Drupal Association. We are also organizers of a lot of camps and a lot of user groups. And what we like to do and what we are part of in our company is to build distributions. And that would be another talk that I could have also put in today. Uh, but if you are interested in any of these distributions like DECOP for the German government, OpenEDU, uh, both of those are built upon uh, Atria Lightning. Uh, both Drupal 8 open it is for higher education. Then Thunder, which comes from uh, the German uh, Burda company, uh, publishing company. And of course Drupal Commerce that we've been doing a lot of projects with. So we believe in distributions uh, because we <coughs> believe in standardization. Uh, so we try to create something and then use that and not always every time try to reinvent the wheel. So this is what we have been focusing on now in, in Germany, the DECOV distribution, which is for the government, um, has been chosen in one of the largest states in Germany, sorry, to be the base for all the websites. So don't touch this. So I was actually getting to the good part now. So before I start, uh, because I need to do a little bit of um, advertisement for my talk tomorrow, because I'm hoping that everybody will be here tomorrow and not leave. Uh, so I'm really passionate about football, as being from Iceland, but I'm going to go into that tomorrow to speak about how the Icelandic soccer team has been, uh, why they are getting so good, and if that is luck or if that is hard work. So I hope that you will attend that talk tomorrow. But Actually, in 2008, um, I was a European champion in robotic soccer. So parallel to the, to the European championship in football, like the Austrians, we, I, was, I was playing for, I was in the team of the Technical University of uh, Wien, Vienna. And at that time, Austrians were not so good in football, but we were pretty good in robotic football. And we even like, we were winning teams from Germany, and that was for the Austrians really big. So this was the biggest hope. And we did not only create these robots, so I was more responsible of the software part of it, but we also had the hardware team, so we were a team of like maybe 10 people. And this is a project that has been going on for a long time. And we did not, it was not enough to let them just play football, because we also allowed them to dance. Oh, sorry, we allowed them to dance. So I'm gonna show you briefly. Sorry that video is of course very bad. They could dance two different types of dances. And this is what we did before the games. And then we, we dressed them up. And of 200 women, no, 200 people that were participating in the European Championship, I was the only woman. And we became European champions. 
So think about that when you're stacking your team. But basically it works like this. We have little golf balls. Uh, we have computers, my, uh, cameras on the top that detect the colors. So we have four different colors on the top. And depend, like the, the ball is orange. And then we create an algorithm to see like, so we, to see like where to hit and all that. But basically the computer does it all, the software. We could only turn it on for the five minute game. We could only turn it on and then there was half time. And then we could change our algorithm. So we had like five, six different algorithms. So we looked at what the other team was actually doing because we saw a pattern and then we switched the algorithm. So, and the referee was only there to <laughs> help when the robot robots were in the corner and they couldn't do anything else. <laughs> and we, we were not allowed to do anything, so... Yeah, and you see like, we were sitting there and the other team was sitting on the other side, so... Anyhow, this was like in 2008, so a lot of fun. But let's not forget why we are here, except anybody has questions. So this is basically a showcase. I'm going to show you a, a case from... A, project that we did last year, which is called Open Doors, and that's uh, helping uh, Christians around the world, they are being uh, persecuted, I think it is the correct, persecuted, thank you, I have only the German word for it. So this is a very content rich site, and the challenge here was that they have so many, they have so many different types of content that we really had to think about at the beginning, how can we make this possible for the editors, because the editors are not technical at all, and they have a team of very many people who are working on the site. So we were thinking about, it's, it, the, the URL is opendoors.de, and there's even in Poland as well. So we spent a lot of time to think about how can we make them have a page that they can create landing pages really quickly, but at the same time be able to create content really quickly, which is a challenge often, because creating landing pages, you have to think about it before. How actually do you want to do that? So if you see, like, there's all kinds of areas. We are showing the latest news. There are these so-called ads. Um, just for those, like, it has changed a little bit now, like, it's a project that we're just working on constantly. Um, it's basically to give you a little bit of an idea of how a front page looks like. You see there an element, you have here blocks. And this can be solved in so many ways in Drupal, and that's actually one of the bad things about Drupal, is that we can do the things however we want to do it, which makes it a little bit complicated. So this could be built with blocks and layouts, and you know, we can think about all the different ways of how to do it. So it is really important to choose something in the beginning and stick with it. So just please feel free to go on the, on the page. So a couple of facts. We started in May 2016. Uh, that meant Drupal was 8.1.0. Uh, so in the end of the summer, which was pretty early on, uh, we had a stable version. And then, yeah, today, sorry, I didn't update that. Of course, it's not... 8.3.7, so I forgot this one. What we also did in this, this has a shop. So in October 2016, so really quickly after DrupalCon in Dublin, I think, we sat down in, with the commerce guys and we said to them, hey, we need a shop up and running in, in the beginning of March, April. And they were like, no, it's not going to happen. So what we did then, we started to contribute to the commerce part two because we had to have that up and running. And the project was launched on the 1st of April, 2017, with a completely fully blown commerce shop. Um, and of course, in Drupal 8, uh, which had challenges. Firstly, there are also a lot of web forms on this page, and we of course started with the YAML forms, and then that all need had to change. And now the latest problem here was of course all the media uh, upgrade. So going from 8.3 over to 8.4 was of course a big step and a difficult one that took a lot of time. I don't know if you have experience with going there. 
do the least changes. But basically, if you go and you look at this website, you will see that there's so many pages and they are so different. But this is everything we have. We have only five content types. So we have the basic page, which is the page that has basically one field, and that's called that's a paragraph field. <coughs> then we have events and news, and that was decided because we are importing that with REST or with the REST interface. We are importing that from another source, so therefore it was important to have events and news as a separate content type. But with the option of being able to put in paragraphs as well in there. Um, then we have the country profile, which we only use CK editor, and I'm going to go into that why we did not use paragraphs there. And then there's also imports of uh, prayers and jobs. So basically, this is a very simple, slim Drupal backend that creates a lot of complicated notes. You can say that. So and that's why. So we have 25 different paragraphs. So I will give you all the access to all the slides, so, uh, because I see that there's no way to read this. Um, but the 25 different paragraphs, this is what we defined with the client. We said to the client, okay, please tell us, what do you want? And we, uh, like, luckily we did this project HR with the client, so the client uh, was really allowed to take his wishes and change them during the process, because otherwise the, this would have been not possible. But we created 25 different paragraphs that we said, okay, you have a landing page, and you can basically put on the landing page whatever you want in whatever order you want. You have to be really creative. And if you think about, okay, what should I start with? Should I start with a hero slider? Should I start with, should I start with a text block? Should I start with a news slider? Where should I start? But that was a challenge that we discussed with the client beforehand. We said to them, you have to be aware of that you have to be able to imagine this in your head before you start writing it, because otherwise this is going to be a very bad concept. So that worked out really well. Uh, we even have a, uh, we have a really nice one here, it's called uh, an empty paragraph. So they said, like, sometimes we just want to have like an empty area in whatever color we want. And we're like, okay, how do you do that? And they said, like, but sometimes we want to have it like really small, and sometimes a little bit bigger, and sometimes a little bit bigger. So we're like, okay, let's create an empty paragraph where you can choose the color of the paragraph or of the area. You can choose it if it is small, medium, or large. So it's one pixel, five pixels, or ten pixel, something like that. And then they get their area, and then they can basically put as many areas as, as, as they want. But that's Exactly, you, you say like, what, you know? <laughs> and we also thought the same when we were working with them. We were like, you have the craziest ideas, but in the end it really worked out well because they can basically do whatever they want and they are not unhappy with their Drupal bucket. Which is something that we too often hear, that it is just too complicated. Because we put a lot of effort in making this work. So let's look at an example of a paragraph. The hero image, so it's not the hero slider, that's another paragraph, <laughs> but the hero image paragraph. That is how it looks like. And uh, let's think about this now, this was a fixed fix project. Fixed project, fixed price, fixed scope. Client would say, I want to have a hero image. Oh, okay, how should it be? Yeah, it should just be that there's a, I can put in text, there's a link to somewhere and there's an image. Yeah, perfect, let's do that. But what the client actually wanted, he wanted to be able to put in a picture. He wanted to be able to put in a, a text and a subtext and a link. But he also wanted to be able to control exactly what colors he uses on these elements. Plus, he wanted to be able to say exactly where it should be on this image or in this. Because obviously, this guy here, if he was here, this would not work out. So we had, like, luckily, we had the chance then to do what he wanted because we, we said, like, okay, we give him up, upper, up, up, left, middle, left, down, left, you know. Um, plus we allowed him just to put in the color that he wanted. So here we see <coughs> the paragraph. So this is the first paragraph in there. You go to edit. Um, 
So content background color, you can then, in this case, we gave them just fixed, but we also have like a color chooser for other paragraphs. Then you can say headline position, set their left in this case. Uh, you could also choose between, so the, the screen test that I did, like it didn't show the drop downs. But basically you can, uh, in here, then really choose how you want to do it. So it will just repeat again because it's just a GIF. So that's how they do it. They call it P12 because it's a hero image and everything with the hero images was P1 and then it is like 1, 1, 1, 2, 1, 3. So they have in their handbook a catalog of what is what and they show like really nice pictures of that. But that's how he can, the client can completely choose how he should do it. So let's then look at center text. That's how a center text look like, looks like. And um, again, there's a couple of challenges that we have here. He wants to have a, a photo in the background, but of course, also a color in the background. And then you, of course, have the problem that if you have a really light photo or a light color, then of course you have to have a different type of the, the font. It has to then be dark or light. So you can either detect that automatically, so that's possible, or what you do, like what we just did here, we just told him that he just has to like, make the decision. So here you can put the title, he can then also say if he wants the title to be there or not. And he can then put the background photo in it. So the challenges that we have with this one is that, you know, responsiveness, how it's going to work out with the photo that is done in the background, because this also looks really, it's a really light photo, so in this case it's no problem. But it's here, but when it's smaller, of course it's going to be like partly on the, over it, like the content is going to be over it. But this seems to be a really simple paragraph, which, is, which it is, is also. You know, if we look at how this is done, it's called P3, center text. Uh, and it is really simple, but like, there is also a lot of effort made in thinking about how this should be done, so he can then use it. So here he also like, wants to be able to, to put in, uh, make it bold, or everything. Choose the background color, choose the color, and this is the color picker. You can then say transparent or, and then you always have the links and all that. Any questions so far? Actually, yeah. Yeah? So did you mention um, they can change the font on that one? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. Sorry, I, 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 the colors of the font. The color, okay, but not the actual mm -hmm. uh, font itself. Oh, yes, bro. No, I think we disallowed that. But <laughs> yeah, I think that would be too, too dangerous. But what we are, uh, there is, there's a really, like, I could share that somehow with you if anybody's interested in, in detecting the color and then switching the, the color of the font. That's something that we just wrote now recently also for another client, which is really helpful. Because that, that's something that the client is, they love that. You know, or the editors. Because in the end, it is about making them happy, because then your product will become successful. Uh, so we have the new slider. So this is also uh, just a normal news slider that shows the, the latest news in that sense. But this is a paragraph then that you can choose to put in anywhere. So it's P51, the 25 of them. And I think we are here just referencing, uh, so we created a view and we have a taxonomy which is countries. And so they can really choose if they want to show all news or if they want to show all news for a certain text, like a term. So how this was done, we created a paragraph. The only field that the paragraph has is a, a reference field. It has nothing else to this taxonomy. So there is nothing else for him to do. He just gets the news slider and he puts in the, the, the country or not. And then it will automatically show the latest news from this term or from everything if he doesn't choose anything. So I think I have a, yeah, I have the display here from the views. Again, very small to look at here, but uh, afterwards you can look at that in the details. <coughs> but basically there is a, a contextual filter there and this contextual we just had to write like a little hook that then takes uh, the field from the paragraph, this only field, and then that goes into the contextual filter and then the view gets displayed. 
Um, so, so for the like, what we often see is when the when the client has to like choose the blocks or something like that, and he has to find in a really long list. You know, I don't know if you're familiar with that really long list with very many displays from views, and he has to then okay, now I'm doing this, and then to put in contextual filter or something like that. And uh, this makes it just really easy. Like, I want to put in the news, and either I put in everything, or I say for with what country I want to have it. So, then comes actually the, the problem that we had, uh, and we didn't realize this back then. We know that now, luckily, and I want to like at least share that information, is that what about reusable stuff? So, paragraphs are not reusable. So, if you create a paragraph with content, it's not like that you can create another node and just reuse this what you did before. And uh, that would mean that for the client, when he wants to create like an advertisement, like there's an event next week, that he would have to do that on every single page that he wants. And this we are also experiencing in, in the distributions that we are working with. And how we just built it here is that we created a reusable paragraph, which is very, very simple. This is a reusable paragraph. This is just a, a, you know, an advertisement for something. You can say it like that. Um, you know, help out, volunteer at a youth day for the organization. Uh, so what we allow them, so we just created entities. Just very simple entities. And the entities just have um, photo, uh, text and title and link. And of course, color and all that stuff left and link, left and up and down. But these par these entities are then uh, we call them banner list. So what they do, they create like their little entities. So they just go in and say, oh, I want to go to. We created like an overview page with all your banners, and then they can just look at them and they can you know edit them and change them then for every other like everywhere where it's used which is, of course, really helpful. Then, if they want to add it in, so look here, we have the empty paragraph. See, what I spoke about earlier. So, basically, P7, banner image reusable, that just is a reference field. So the only thing that this paragraph does is a reference to an entity. Very simple. Like, the only thing that we need to do is just to make the display, or the view, view display, really correct. So they just choose here. So this is actually something that we didn't solve in this project, which is, uh, I hope that we can, you know, and probably there's a module already for that, where we can, in the banner part here, you know, this autocomplete, like, content editors, they hate this autocomplete stuff. I don't know if you're familiar with that. Because you start to write, like, er and amtliche, and then you suddenly see, like, ten banners that have the same name, and you have to think, oh, what was actually the title of it? So. What, how you could take this to the next level is, of course, is have a little uh, little search where you can search and then see that. And this is how we are building that today because we decided in the distributions that we're doing today not to do this with entities, like the, the entity, how it comes in Drupal, we are doing it with media. So we are using, which is an entity, of course, but we are using media for everything that is reusable. So I can only, like, if you, anybody wants to chat about that afterwards, and I'm also not technically involved in these projects in that sense, but if anybody wants to talk about that, then um, what you can then do, we create, like, media for everything that is reusable and should be reusable, and then you can also, when you're selecting it, you can create, like, views and everything, so with a media browser or all kinds of other ways. So that is another way how you could, in a paragraph, reference a media. Entity, and that's definitely uh, in open ADU main D of distribution. We completed with everything like that, but that's another way to do it. Questions? Good. And uh, these are, for example, examples of like more reusable. You know, where you have a banner block. You know, where you can put more reusable things on there, I think it is just like referencing then six, does it not go in there? 
Yeah. So let's not go into that in details, but it's the same same story here. We reference here just six different types of entities. So uh, paragraph editing. Um, what very many really like. The problem that very many have is that paragraph editing is really not so um, user friendly. So what we I want just to tell you that that what you can do there, you know, if you look at this, you know, I don't know if you're familiar with paragraphs. If you are, have you seen it so nice before? Um, probably not, except that you know because we never have time to make this look good for our clients. You know, we always just do what we need to do because we only have the budget for what we what you can see, but here you can really make this look however you want it to look. So the client can look here and he can read so he knows exactly what paragraph to go into. And that's done in uh, Manage Display. When you are in, uh, if you just go in Manage Display, you go in Custom Display Settings and you click the preview in the paragraph. So then you are basically uh, then you can put in the, everything you want that you can even use like image styles to make the photo there. So this is so simple. And this is, you don't even have to put that into the budget. You just, you can just make it nice without a lot of effort. So in the paragraph, go to manage display, go to the, uh, you know, add the preview and then just make in there whatever you want. Okay. Uh, people have also asked about the red area on top. Like, what is this? So we are using the environment indicator module because that's also something that uh, is really helpful that you can easily see whether you are on dev test and live. And in this case, we are live, and that's red. It means like, what's up? Whatever you're doing, don't press anything because it's red. Except you really know what you're doing. And that's also something that is so easy to set up. Briefly about CK Editor, because I'm almost uh, over time. I have 10 minutes. Um, how can an editor decide to create a page when he has 25 different ways of doing it? There is no, like, he has to be very creative, and therefore there has to be also other ways of doing it. And there are certain content, for example, news, and in this case, um, where we were putting in, basically, they have a, like a, a long report with information. They go into Word, they copy it, Control A, Control C, and they want to put it on the website. That is with paragraphs not possible, because you have to then start by taking the first half and add an image, and you have to take the next one and then the next one. So the client had the need, in some cases, to just be able to paste this into a CK editor, but still he wants to make it nice. So how can we still allow him to make that nice into CK editor? And there are a couple of uh, contrib modules, plus there are also, we created a small modules, but they are very simple, which is for example, Entity Embed and Entity Browser. We used like a mix of these two. One of them was a little bit more advanced when we did the project. Um, so you can basically remember the reusable entities that I was speaking about before, or the views, for example, insert view. You know, these, um, if you want to, if you have like a really long page with a lot of text, you sometimes just want to place something in between. And that could, for example, be, I want to insert a view with like contextual filter to show in between uh, news. Or you want to say, like, I want to put in uh, my, some photos or something like that. Uh, so this is a page that it's like a, called a country profile, where it's being talked about, like, where this country is standing in terms of the topic. And there, for example, we have a table of content. And that we just automatically, we created a, um, what's it called here, the text format filter here. We created a new filter called a table of content filter. That means that it automatically, automatically takes all the H2s and just renders a table of content. Yeah. So, like something that we are really used to when we use uh, when we are working with Wiki, for example, that this just happens automatically. 
This is a very simple thing that you just you could do. So that's what we are demonstrating here. Uh, you just detect the H2s, but then you have to also create a filter before, so you say in the Seek editor that, that this is the behavior that you want. So another thing that comes probably, now here, here you see the news. This is like inserting news, and they wanted to have it like a little bit that, you know, it just comes a little bit in the middle. And then comes also a, a cart, like, like this one charts. This is also taking then, uh, we just say like add a chart, and then basically we just uh, render the map from AM chart based on the information that is in the country profile, and we just make it like, look really nice. So they do that in here. So up here, Melton and Zoe Nigeria, this is the view. So they, we go just, you can, there are buttons here, this button, the blue button, that just, allows you to insert the view that you want to insert wherever you want and then you can put the argument in there. So this is just a really nice add-on for being able to pimp up your very long content. Uh, if you go and look there is, uh, we also did this with these tokens, AM map. This is also just a token uh, that references then the, this node. And we also did it like this, that they have in their handbook a list of a couple of tokens that they can then, when they insert the content, is also just put in the, like, paste it in. So they don't have to use all the buttons. But this was really important for them to make that look a little bit nice. So I was just taking a picture. So this is like the, the content, uh, the table of content. And here we are just using AM maps and AM charts, basically this, Detail information is coming from the node itself, like its fields on the node. Um, this is also the same for the news. So we allow in the news to just insert whatever you want to insert in there. And that's just very important for, for them to be able, like, because very often the, the news is just long text that has to be there and <laughs> they need to pin that up. And we allow them to, in the news, and also just tag a country, and then we display all the information from the country. So please just have a look at this uh, website. Here we are also using AM maps to generate this worldwide map here that shows which countries are the bad countries for them. And, uh, and this is then updated regularly every year. A lot of content, a lot of information in very short time. Uh, like always, I say in Drupal camps and in certain events, this is mainly for inspiration. Please feel free to to ask questions, to come afterwards and just chat about something uh, if you want to. But if you have questions now, what? Just oh, five minutes. Oh, I, thought, I was hoping that you would ask questions. Yeah. You said there are some things not to do with paragraphs. What? That is basically to choose between when should I use a paragraph and when not. That was mainly what I was meaning there. So making the decision that I spoke about in the beginning of choosing the content types, which then, you know, when, because we did, in the first week we did the mistake that we defined paragraphs in news. So we said like you can, you can build up your news in a really nice way. And then we just figure it out that the client just wants to paste in information from somewhere else, or in this case, we are importing it with the rest. So you have to make the decision really carefully. When is it really? And you have to you have to discuss this with the client, and you have to convince the client, <laughs> because the client is not necessarily going to understand this when you're discussing it in the beginning. But please, like mock it up, prototype it rather to show him the difference. So that's why we're inserting views and. Therefore, we are allowing him yeah to do all kinds of stuff instead here. Yeah. Well, wow, more questions, yeah? Um, just like top level, like to create paragraphs, is that a site builder? Or yeah. Or is it a development task? It's a site builder task. Site builder. Yeah. Okay. Yeah? When you create paragraphs, you add an icon, and you ever use that icon anywhere? You know when you create a paragraph in structure? Yeah. It says add an icon. So you can create an SVG icon and add it in there. And I can't see anywhere it's actually running in. No? I, I mean, 
Good question. Is it not just one of the Yeah, is it not just one of the little buttons that are Well yeah, but it would be nice to have a view of those buttons that had the icon. So if you've got text on the left and the image on the right, yeah. it has it. Or if it's a header, it has it, you know. Yeah. An H two patterns. So, no, yeah. Yeah, I didn't the mystery continues. Yeah. And, uh, and 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 one one more thing that I forgot to mention with uh, accessibility and SEO and all that. Like having paragraphs, you're giving the the, the editor a lot of uh, freedom to mess up in your terms with H1 and H2s. So what we had to do, we had to define up these 25 paragraphs. We had to define, I think, five paragraphs that we allow the uh, editor to say, is this the H1 or is this not the H1? Because he then we need if it is on top and if it's the main title we need that, that to be an H1 and we also allow him to turn that on and off. So before I'm like we can chat about this but before I want to tell you about the little baby that is uh, just coming to life. There are stickers here I've been promising that online. Um, please uh, if all of, like most of you probably know there will be no trouble con in Europe organized by the Drupal Association. Um, but the community, uh, a group of 15, 20 people, have been sprinting weekly since September, Vienna. And we have uh, been putting together this event that will take place in Darmstadt, which is only 25 minutes away from Frankfurt Airport. Um, we just started Ticket Sales, and it's called an Early Supporter Ticket because we are just a group of people that are trying to put this event together. So we also need our community to help us to make this happen. So uh, the venue has been secured and everything has been secured, but we need people to buy tickets to show support. So if you want to come, then buy it now because you will get the best price, 380 euros. It's, it's going to be a great conference. And if anybody wants to speak about that, then feel free to ask questions about Drupal Europe and get stickers. You get stickers here because you attended this talk. <laughs> yeah, so thank you. And uh, I hope to like have a good discussion with all of you regarding flexible accommodating. Yes? Just one more question, perhaps, uh, relates to what one, uh, the first one. I'm just wondering about how many paragraphs you end up with and actually looking at uh, your client's workflow. Because I think there is emphasis within Drupal on sort of identified workflow sort of thing. Can you comment on that at all? Are you are you then meaning the workflow from the editor perspective that he can put it onto review and all that? Are you? Yeah, that sort of yeah. Yeah, so we are using that here, and and like because paragraphs in that sense, it's just uh, something that you are then creating for this note. So uh, the node itself will then just go into the workflow modus. Am I answering your question or? Yeah, yeah. I'm just, I'm just trying to figure out like paragraphs on one hand and uh, the, the requirement that somebody might have sort of thing. Yeah, but no, it is not like, uh, of course, for the reusable paragraphs, there is their own like, you can then review that and uh, put that into the status that you want to in the workflow. Um, and there is also, of course, a challenge then if that entity is then unpublished and you then have to make sure that you cannot add it. You know, there's all kinds of complications that you will have there. Um, so either you have to have fit editors or you have to make it good so they can only choose what is published or only choose what is in the mode, uh, uh, like, reviewed mode. Or, you know, it's okay to go online. Like, I suppose what I'm wondering is um, if the workflow might rationalize the number of paragraphs, yeah. of course. Yeah. Sort of and there has also been, like, yeah, and, and on top of this, the challenges with uh, multilingual. We have had them also here with the paragraphs um, in relation to that. So there has been a couple of challenges, but that's always getting better with every release now with Drupal 8. Ex 
actually the we are just in this case we are we have this really good servers and uh, CDN and everything on it. So for the user, it's not affecting it at all. Not for you, but for editorial. For the editors, no. We like I don't know how many ten maximum ten paragraphs. So it's not so much. Okay, so I think we have to stop. Yeah, is it on?